What's your ghost story? Like and subscribe or I'll haunt you tonight. When I was probably around 13 or 14, we moved into this house on the top of a bluff. It was a pretty old house, hard to say how old though. I've always seen black figures walking around but brushed it off as my imagination. One night when I couldn't sleep, I have sleep insomnia, I decided to try to do a test I read online called the cold patch or hot patch, it's pretty straightforward. You simply ask aloud, if there's any spirits here, can you make a cold patch? I was laying on my bunk bed with my door open, when I decided F it. I then said aloud softly, if there's any spirits here, can you make a cold patch please? Not even a moment later, I had chills go down my spine and was cold. I thought to myself, this has to be a coincidence right? Nothing happened for a few minutes, but I just had an off feeling and looked out my door from my bunk and couldn't see anything in the dark, but felt like there was something there. By this point, I was pretty freaked out and just lied on my back and stared at the ceiling to try to forget about it. Moments later, I hear what sounds like soft footsteps walking towards the ladder of my bed. At this point, I was just frozen shock. I swear on my life, I heard the ladder creaking as if someone was coming up and was shitting bricks. I sat there in a sweat when I feel as if someone's grabbing my ankles and all I could think was, dang, this is where I get pulled off the bunk and die right? Never felt anything again, but didn't sleep the rest of the night. This happened when I was around 3 or 4 years old and it happened just days after my grandfather passed away. That night, I suddenly woke up to the sound of the TV in the living room downstairs. I got out of my room and went downstairs silently to the living room. I saw a silhouette of a man sitting on the sofa with the TV turned on. I went upstairs again and went to my parents' room. I was shocked, because both of my parents were already sleeping. My brothers were also asleep at that time and there was no one else in our house. I was too afraid to go to the living room again and went back to my room. I can't really sleep that night. I told my parents about what happened that night the next day, of course, they don't believe me. I tried bring it up again when I was older, they still don't believe it, but I know what I saw, it's just too real to be a dream. I have a few, but the one that really sticks with me is about a time I was having a sleepover with my best friend. Now both of us have our share of creepy ghost experiences, but this one was really freaky to me mainly. I was in my best friend's room and we had just had a small argument, and my friend Malia, decided that she would take a bath and left me in her room on her bed. As she walked out, she turned the light of the room off, and me being me, I didn't turn the light back on as I had my phone. As I'm sitting on her bed looking directly into her closet which we had just got finished taking all of the clothes out of because we had been cleaning it. As I looked into it, I saw what looked to be an old man. He looked as as he was dressed to go to church. After staring at him for a few moments, I looked into Malia's mirror which also had a view into the closet. In the other side of the closet which I couldn't see from my spot on her bed, I saw a woman, again little old lady looking as if she was dressed for church. I was confused, but just continued looking at them. Right as I was about to try and speak to the two old people, Malia walked in and turned on the lights, and both the old lady and man vanished, and I was left staring into a completely empty closet. I must have been staring for a while because the question Malia asked startled me a bit, did you see the little old lady and man? I was shocked that she knew they were there and answered yes, I had seen them, and I asked if this was a normal occurrence. Surprisingly, it was, and this was just the first time anyone else had seen them. I wasn't scared, but this isn't the first time her and I have seen things like this. My school is Christian and the school was constructed around the 1920s and it previously served as a nun house, basically a large house or mansion where nuns live in. And there is a legend in our school that sometime in the 1940s the mansion burned down during the night, and all the nuns died while they were sleeping, and they are rumored to roam around in the school. They are mostly active after hours, so basically around 6 to 8 a.m. every year, we have a type of talent show festival at our school in November and for that night only you are allowed to go inside the school alone after 6 p.m. since the show usually ends at 1 a.m. One night, me and a couple of friends went up, keep in mind our school has four floors, to the top floor to see if we could catch anything. While we were roaming the hallways, one friend of mine became completely petrified in fear. 
We knew this because he made a loud gasp noise and just stood there. When we asked, he pointed at the door with a tiny window that you could see inside the classroom. There was a freaking nun staring at us. We bolted out of there, but when we got the staircase door, for some reason, it was looked from the outside as if someone looked us in. While we were trying to open the door, you could hear a classroom door open and we just hear footsteps coming our way. They weren't running footsteps, just casual footsteps walking our way. We got so scared that I knew that we needed to break the door to get out. I kicked the door open, it was a wooden door, and we got out as fast as we could down the next three floors to the main lobby. As we got to the lobby, we heard an alarm. We knew we needed to get out of the school. We all got in my car and drove off to my house, everyone stayed at my house for the rest of the weekend. Later that week, we returned to school only to find out that the police and the fire department had locked down the school as an investigation was taking place. I pretended to be surprised and asked what had happened, and one of the police officers said that they were investigating a break-in. We already knew that was the reason, but one creepy detail the officer mentioned was that the intruder burned down the entire fourth floor of the building. We were in shock since we did not recall ever seeing any fire, not even smelled it, that makes us all think what would have happened if I had not kicked the door down in time. It's been a few years since it happened, and still everyone in our group refuses to even step foot on the fourth floor, myself included. My first year of college, I was living in a dorm that had burned down a few years ago, but had been rebuilt. I'm pretty skeptical of any spiritual stuff, but this put me on edge. I've always been a sleep talker, but since I had never had roommates before, I usually didn't get reports back of what I would say. After a few nights of sleep talking and my roommates telling me what I said, I decided to download one of those sleep talking apps. Most nights, it was mumbling or random words that weren't really in any coherent order. But occasionally, there were some things that sounded like I was having a conversations, appropriate pauses and all. I had a conversation where I offered to walk someone back, I didn't know to where, and talked about how I was worried, since it was dark out about them getting home safely. On particularly unsettling night, I had a conversation I emphatically asked, why do you always pick on me? It's always me, why don't you leave me alone? Uncomfortable, but it's just sleep talking right? Soon I started sleepwalking, which had happened before. But I frequently found myself staring out the window at 3 am, or one morning my roommate's chair was pulled up to her bed as I do when I stand on it to talk to her, her bed was lofted, as if I had been staring at her in my sleep. One night, I woke up around 3 am and realized my other roommate who was bunked above me was staring at me from the base of my bed. I was freaked out, because I saw their silhouette at the foot of my bed, but they weren't moving, just staring. Then the bed above me creaked, my roommate tossed in her bed meaning whatever was staring at me was not my roommate. When I looked back to the figure nothing was there. I realized this isn't super dramatic or anything, but it freaked me out. I knew someone was watching me that night, and it wasn't my roommates. When my mom was in her late teens, her sister about 5 years younger, they decided to try the Ouija board. My grandma also participated. I think this would have been in the mid-90s. The house they lived in was an old log house that has an addition to the side of it that was modern. So only like one-fourth of the house was really old. So they are in the living room asking all kinds of questions. The spirit they are talking to tells my mom that she will have two kids. I have one brother, so this came true. Also, my aunt was told that she would have two kids, this was also true. The spirit then tells my mom that her boyfriend is the devil. Everything she would ask about him, it would say, X is evil or is the devil. Fast forward a few years later, when I was born, it turns out that he was cheating on her and they ended up divorcing. Okay, back to the Ouija board, so they end up asking if they can see the spirit. This is the part I always get chills at. The spirit says he is upstairs in the closet. So they go upstairs, but don't see anything. But there used to be another closet that my pap sealed over. So years after this, while digging in the yard to make a garage, they find some headstone that was buried underground. This kind of ties the story all together. I've never experienced anything scary in this house, but my mom has told me a few other stories. Such as there was some toy in the house that played the military song taps. This toy would randomly start playing. Also, some things would seem to be misplaced or magically appear in different locations. 
Very spooky. I have grown up in the same house all my life, and have seen and heard a few abnormal things. Growing up as a kid my dad would always tell me stories about seeing jinn. I am in Muslim in Islam this is an Arabic term used for demons and other things in that nature, and exorcisms when he was in Somalia. I always thought they were fake and he was just trying to scare me, until I experienced it myself. I have a clear memory of a night when I was in 4th to 5th grade, I opened my eyes, and there was a shadow figure in my room. As soon as I saw it, it ran and disappeared. I immediately fell back asleep thinking it was some weird dream. The same year something even more strange happened, as I was trying to fall asleep I could hear a bloody scream not those fake kind of screams. It sounded like someone was screaming for their life like they were being stabbed or shot. I could also feel something holding my whole body down painfully. After about 5 minutes of not being able to control my anything in my body, I fall back asleep. I'm currently in high school and I decided to move my room downstairs, since it is cooler down there and I want privacy. I have recently had so many paranormal experiences. My first one was when I woke up around 4 am my whole body froze, and I heard a voice whisper, shush, be quiet. I literally ran in my living room and nearly peed myself. Now this one I'm going to tell leaves chills down my spin. So I am sleeping on my bed, and I see this sorta of childlike shadow figure behind me. I believe it's just my little brother trying to take my charger for the night. He slams a part of my thigh and my shoulder, I jump up thinking it's a prank from my brother, but no one is there when I looked behind me. Now I am constantly walking up anywhere near 2 to 5 am every single day. I have had a few nights where I wake up and it feels like someone is moving my body and I have no control. I don't know what's following me or what it wants and it's honestly driving me insane. Growing up, I would often stay with my great grandmother in her two bedroom home. She had this rule that I had to leave my door open when I went to bed. For years, I would wake up to my television turning on, to static, and my door being wide open. I thought it was her coming in, but didn't ask. One year, when I was around 13 or so, I stayed up till around 3.20 am. I got up to shut my door as I was about to go to bed, when I heard a man and a woman talking in the living room. I walked out to see if my grandparents had come over to pick me up, no one was there. Everything was shut off, so I walked to my great grandma's room, only to find her fast asleep in her bed with the TV on static. I can remember walking up to the television and looking at it, debating on turning it off. I didn't, instead, I walked back to my room, closed my door just a little bit, and crawled into bed. Maybe three seconds after I pulled the covers over myself, my door and the heavy wooden accordion doors in the hallway slammed open with so much force, I thought they'd create holes. My GG and I ran to the hallway, meeting each other there at the same time. She did not believe it wasn't me, she never did. My aunt had also had these things happen to her, which I only found out about after GG passed away. We both would see this tall man in a wide cowboy hat, boots, and what looked like chaps or a trench coat. He would stand in the doorway and at the end of my bed. I ended up not sleeping in that room anymore, but he'd follow me. After we sold the house, I would see him around my house countless times. It's been years, I'm 23 now. Things still happen, things go missing. I wake up with bruises on my arms where it looks like someone grabbed me. My aunt hears a man whispering in her ear, calling for people. We see him often, I've seen him while driving, I don't know who he is. When I was 37, I went to my high school reunion. I flew into the nearest airport and rented a car. The distance was about 35 miles through a very rural and almost abandoned part of the country. About 3 miles outside of town, I see someone on the side of the road, flagging me down. Up in the north woods, no one ever leaves someone stranded. It turned out that it was one of the guys I had attended school with, I will call him Jim. Jim gets in the car and we start talking. I had not seen him in 20 years but he still looked the same, maybe a little older. We get to town and I ask him if he wants to come to the VFW and have a drink, he says, no, just take me home. Jim's parents had lived only a few blocks from my grandmother's house and I turned in that direction, but he said to take him to a part of town that was really on the outskirts. Up by the fairgrounds and the cemetery, there was a mobile home park out there and I figured that is where he lived. When we reached the end of the turnoff he said, just drop me here, it was good to see you again, 
and he walks off into the night. I go to the VFW, met some of my old classmates, we start to talk. Now, please understand, I have never done drugs nor do I drink more than soda pop. I was stone cold sober. Tired after a 13 hour flight that had included a 3 hour layover but sober. As we are talking about who is coming to the reunion, I mentioned that I had just picked Jim up 3 miles east of town, and had dropped him off up by the fairgrounds. Everyone gets real quiet, even the guy singing karaoke stops and lays down the mic. My cousin goes white as a new cotton t-shirt. Barb, Jim died on that curve 8 years ago, rolled his car, we were all at his funeral. I start to feel really dizzy, I go out to the car to take some deep breaths and decide whether or not I am sane. There on the seat is the local newspaper, printed 8 years previous, containing Jim's obituary, I still have the damn paper. Every now and then, I take it out and stare at it and still wonder what the hell happened. When I was a kid, I had one of the most frightening experiences that still haunts me till today. My family moved to a new house, typical scary movie starter, which was in between a good and bad neighborhood. Someone broke into our garage, then tried to break in while my sister and I were in the living room. It became apparent that the place was haunted very fast. There were shadow people that lived in the attic, which also was my mom's room as well. There was a little girl that would randomly show up but not really do anything. And I swear my cat that passed away while living there also joined in on the haunting as well. Now for what scared me, beside the shadow people and girl, there was something evil living in that house with us. It never really showed itself, but you could just feel it when it came around. So, my twin and I shared a bedroom together. We were only able to fit one bed in there, so we had to share it. The other mattress we had we stuffed into our closet since we had nowhere to put it, and our closet was big enough to fit it standing up. More on that later, now, for some reason our bedroom scared us half to death most days. We never slept good while in that room and had ourselves surrounded by stuffed animals at night just to feel some type of safety. During the day, the room wasn't all that bad, so on its good days we would hang out in there, watch movies, and even hang out in the closet making it our fort. It was one of those good days again and we ended up back in the closet just shoving the mattress in there at each other. So just roughhousing around and all that jazz, you know, kid stuff. As we're just goofing off, my sister shoves the mattress at me and I end up behind it slightly, just enough where I can't see the door, which I hear open and close fast. I manage to move the mattress away and look at the door to see that it's closed, then look across the closet and don't see or hear anything. The only light I have is whatever coming out from under the door, which isn't a lot. I sit there for a secant thinking that my sister is just waiting behind the clothes on the other side of the closet waiting to scare me. I could have crawled to the other side, but that would mean climbing over the mattress or squeezing myself behind it to check if she was there or not, which I didn't feel like doing, so I waited to see if she would do anything. When she didn't I called out to her, but got no answer. I started to get a bit annoyed that she wasn't doing anything, and was about to call her again when the mattress started to move. At first, it was just a little push, not at me, but back against the wall then back towards the door. Like someone grabbed the side and was making it sway a bit, but since there wasn't much room in the closer, it couldn't move too much. It only took a few secants for the swaying to turn to full-blown shaking. Like someone was standing up, grabbed the side of it and was shaking it as hard as they could. I was getting scares at that point, because my sister still never answered me, so I started to yell at her to stop and that this wasn't funny anymore. It kept going, and I yelled at her one more time to stop, and it did. Just like that it immediately stopped, but still I didn't hear my sister say anything. She didn't laugh, there was no movement, and no heavy breathing which she should have been doing after all that. We were pretty small as kids, and even though we're twins, she ended up being a lot skinnier than I was, so you would think she would be breathing hard right? But there was nothing. It was so quiet, way too quiet. I wasn't afraid anymore. I was terrified. Something felt off, and I found out fast why. As I sat there in the dark, waiting for my sister to finally laugh or speak up, it happened. I called out her name one more time, and right as I did, something from above grabbed the top of my head. It felt like a hand, but it definitely wasn't my sister's. It came right down and grabbed me. I could feel its fingers and palm of its hand. It was huge and the whole top of my head fit right into it. I have never been that scared in my entire life. 
The guy that tried to break in didn't scares me as bad as this did. What made it worse was that whatever grabbed me was most likely behind me from how the hand was placed. I screamed for my sister and the door opened with my sister standing on the other side. When I heard the door open and close the first time, it was her getting out and shutting it behind her. She was sitting on our bed the whole time I was in there. She told me she doesn't really remember why she left besides suddenly feeling angry, so that's why she left in such a hurry. But once she heard me scream, she was fine and opened the door to see what was wrong. I know there are going to be people that think that maybe she did this somehow. But there was no way for her to stay so quiet, to shake that bed like that. Or to somehow end up behind me to grab me then out the door in just a few seconds to act like she just opened it from the other side, fully standing up. She would have had to climb over my side of the closet and over the mattress, but I would have seen or heard her if she did. She swears even to today that it was not her, and I believe her 100%. It was not her, my guess is whatever grabbed me made my sister mad somehow which made her leave. I think it wanted to separate us, so it could play its own messed up game. I'm now 26, and I'm still afraid of closets after all these years. I still can't explain what happened without it sounding crazy or made up, but I swear it's true. I still pass that house every once in a while, and wonder if it's still there messing with its newest tenants. I was around 7 and decided, hey, I should sleep on my couch instead of my bed, frick it. I woke up for no reason in the middle of the night. I looked at my clock and it was 4 am. I looked around my living room and looked at my fish tank. Standing there was a short dark figure with glowing white eyes. And of course as a 7 year old, I was scared the hell of it. I got up and looked in my kitchen and of course, it was there too. I was stupid for not going to my room. I went straight back to my couch and it under my blanket. Something pulled up my blanket, which is the only reason I believe this and not thinking it is a hallucination. I was scared even more trembling and I looked around it was a tiny bit closer. I got up and looked in my kitchen very quickly, and sure enough, that one moved a little closer too. I finally thought to go to my room and there was one there too. I ran to my parents room and jumped in their bed. This was very scary for me.